Welcome to Gotta Run with Will. My name is Lisa Swan, and I'm guest hosting for Will this week. And I'm here with my friend and teammate, Caesar Trellis of the We Are NYC Running Club. Hi, Caesar. How are you doing? Hey, Lisa. How are you? Oh, Thanks good. for having me. Thank yeah. you. Thanks. We've got a lot to talk about today, so let's get started. Uh, so tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Of how, how did you get started running and what's your background? So my background goes back in terms of running um, since pretty much I was in high school. For many years, I took a break off of running. But in high school, I started um, based on my cross-country team. I was rejected from my baseball team in <laughs> freshman year, and um, I went out and tried for cross-country. And there were a ton of kids that tried out at the time. and. And I remember the first practice, I think I finished in fifth place or top five or something like wow. that. One thing led to another there and I got introduced to cross country season and I found that I actually performed pretty well. My coach put me in what they called the A team back then, which consisted of the top seven runners, I think, that actually score. And where'd you go to school? Oh, I went to high school in Archbishop Malloy High School in Briarwood, Queens. So that's, that's where I was born and raised. That's a pretty legendary school. It? Yeah, it is. A lot of uh, good people come out of there, good, good sports program, uh, very smart academics. A lot of people, um, a lot of students move on to, to college education with lots of scholarships and what there. So what not there. So I'm pretty proud to be from that school and uh, picked up running again after starting a family and whatnot about five years ago. So, and here we are many, many races later and uh, doing a lot of good things in running. So very happy to be back into running. Cool. Yep. What made you get back into running as an adult of many, so many years later? Right around the time I got married um, in my late 20s, early 30s, um, family life started to settle in. You start having kids and whatnot and, and running kind of didn't become much of a priority. Um, but it wasn't until about five, six years ago, I vividly remember being at Disney World with my family and my youngest daughter was three or four at the time mm -hmm. and was in a stroller. I had gained a lot of weight um, after I settled down, got married, bought a house and all that. And at I Disney World, <laughs> of course, yeah, I mean, it's normal. It happens, right? But um I remember being at Disney World and using her stroller as a walker because my wow. I had gained so much weight and, and I had you know, created problems with my feet and it was bothering me to walk. And, and that was kind of a, an aha moment um, wow. where I said, you know what, we got to do something about this. And, and even though I had been running on and off, um, you know, the previous 10 years, um, I wasn't doing it seriously, obviously, because I was gaining the weight. But um, <laughs> so when I came back, you know, from Disney, I, I saw a foot doctor because I was having um, issues with my feet. And um, he basically told me, hey, you got to lose some pounds. So from then on, I started to you know, go back into my running, remembering some of my workouts, started picking up seriously. I, I think mentally, I still remembered the benefits that running had. Mm -hmm. And once I started making the time to get out there, Slowly, you started seeing your the weight drop, changing your health habits, your eating habits, and uh, it kind of became a way of life. I started running a couple of races, and slowly my times got better and better and better. And well, I've been running now again for about five years now. So, yeah. um, and it's the best decision I've made because you know it's not just the physical benefits that I gained. Obviously, losing close to 50 pounds, but uh, mentally, you just feel better, um, and emotionally, you feel better. I, I can't tell you how many times you come home from work and you've had a crappy day and you go out there and you put a couple of miles in and all of a sudden you feel feel a lot better. Every time I go around afterwards, I feel much better Absolutely. no matter what's going on in my life. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So, so yep. and, and I guess one of the things from being in, in high school in the cross country team, you like the camaraderie of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. That was one of the things that I liked about the cross country team. You hit, you hit the nail on the head there was, you know, A, I never knew I would like cross country going into it or running itself. You're kind of a little like a deer in headlights going into it. Oh, I don't know what I'm getting myself into here. But all of a sudden, you 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 do on the team. You meet a lot of like-minded individuals, which I did back then. Some of them, which today are still very good friends of mine. And you're surrounded by positive people, which I think when you're doing a change in 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 childhood, right, from grammar school to high school, you kind of need a little bit of confidence. And I think that's something that definitely provided for me was being on a team, excelling and, and being surrounded by positive minded people. And that impact kind of, you know, stayed with me during high school. And even after leaving high school and into college, you remember how just being around positive, like minded people builds your confidence. And, and once you have confidence, you can do amazing things. One of the things I remember, and, and it's almost it's crazy to think that this is one of the things I remember. I remember Every summer, we would actually go to track camp, um, which was cross country camp. You know, you, wow. you'd go like, you know, the last couple of weeks of August, you, you'd go up to, we went to Vermont um, for, for, for camp, and that was just so much fun. You know, it was 12, you know, 
high school kids going out there. They made us get up early and do some rigorous workouts in the Vermont Hills. We had so much fun, you know, and even though our coach was with us, he understood, you know, hey, we were high schoolers, <laughs> that we needed to have fun. Um, and we did, you know, and then just a, a lot of the meets, traveling to meets as well. Like when you got to the varsity team, you were able to travel out of state to, to pen relays and whatnot. So, oh, wow. so many experiences that you get to do that not being on the team, you probably wouldn't have gotten to do. So uh, I'm meeting other teammates, uh, other competitors too from other high schoolers was uh, definitely a plus. Um, you got to see how different teams and different schools did things and helped you kind of appreciate what you had going on. So lots of good memories. And like I said, even to this day, because the memories were so good, I've kept in touch with a lot of you know folks from my team. So uh, very thankful for that. So a little bit more about yourself. So you live in Long Island? Yeah, uh, I live right, uh, right into Long Island, not too far in, um, in New High Park. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're married and have two daughters? Yeah, been married to my beautiful wife, Nicole, for about 13 years now. I've got two daughters. Yeah, and um, everything's thankfully going very well, so. Cool. <laughs> cool. So let's go back to when you started running again. So mm -hmm. you were doing on your own? Started running again, like I mentioned, it was about five years ago. I didn't really know where I was going with it other than that I knew I just wanted to lose some pounds. But as you started to work out, you know, week after week, month after month, I kind of saw, oh, you know what, I could, I could still run. You know, it wasn't just, you know, running to lose weight anymore. You started to remember mentally, watch your stride, do this, do that. You know, you start remembering some of the things that your coaches said, and then all of a sudden, you find yourself signing up for a race. <laughs> you <laughs> Funny know, how and, that works. <laughs> yeah, and then you, you, you run one race and you run the next. And then the funny thing is, when I was starting to run again, I didn't know about New York Road Runners. And I had actually, during the time that I had not been running, there was a part of me that still said, okay, if I can get into the marathon, I'll start running again. Mm -hmm. um, and I signed up for the New York City Marathon a number of times. How many times? I can't, I, I don't even know how many, but I do remember <laughs> before I started running, it was five years in a row of getting wow. rejected. Wow, I thought the, they would the, put you in after that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. so, but it was more than five times I signed okay. up for it. I just remember it was five years in a row that I tried and, and I got rejected in the lottery for the marathon. So, but then when I did start running and I started racing again, I think it was the first race I did was the NYC half about, I think it was 2016. So you got the lottery for that one. That I got that the lottery was, That in. was what you got. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I did sign up for that lottery and that lottery I did get in. And it was my first race after a long time of not running at all. And in training for that, I learned about the whole nine plus one program. Mm -hmm. And well, the rest is history. So, you know, you do the races and all of a sudden you, you get into the marathon and many, many races later, Obviously, I've, you know, I've run a marathon already, and um, you know you get more in shape, and you know mentally you feel better about yourself, and it's just been a very, very good experience. To, was it different with doing the training on your own at first because you're used to with the high school club and all? And stuff? Yeah, it was a little challenging, especially by me. Um, there's not well, there's runners. It's just everyone kind of runs at their own time. It's not like here in Manhattan where you can go to Central Park and you see a ton of runners. You know, by me, it's a little bit more suburban, and depending on when you go, either you go very early morning or late at night, it, you're pretty much the only one out there. I think. Seeing the weight come off did motivate me enough to, to go out there and do it by myself, whether it was very early in the in the morning or, or late at night. Seeing the results. How long did it little. take you to lose the 50 pounds? It took me about a year and a half. Okay. Yeah, but that's just, you know, not just running. It's, it's, it's a healthier diet. It's watching what you eat. Um, sugar was my biggest downfall, so I think eliminating that helped immensely. And then some of the portion control, too, because I was very guilty of just going on and on without end. So, but thankfully about a year, year and a half, uh, I, I was able to lose that. And um, I don't hopefully have any plans of going backwards. So. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, <laughs> I've discarded all my bag of your clothes now. So that's, that's one way to look at it. You know, if your belt gets tight, that means you gotta, you gotta get honest again. So. Right. Well, that's one of the things like, um, I've heard so many stories of people with the weight loss journey and my mother, she would keep like, like, six or seven things of yeah. sizes in the closet and it was just like no what you what you lose the weight you need to move on and get yeah. rid of it yep <laughs> absolutely so. i think one of the last baggy pair of sweats that i had sitting in a closet i remember saying i don't need this anymore and i think it was one of the nyc halves where it was very cold and i said i'm going to use these throwaway sweats right wow. um and that was it that was the last set so i don't have any of that laying around anymore oh, <laughs> Okay, so after training on your own, though, when did you, um, you had the idea of, of starting up a Facebook group? Before. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, training for the 2018 NYC half. I had already run the 
17 and 16 versions. So when I was training for the 18, which March 2018 NYC half, in the fall of 2017, when people started getting selected for the lottery, I figured, you know what, like you mentioned, you're running by yourself and whatnot. So at the time I had thought, hey, it's getting a little boring running by yourself. I said, let me see if I can find some, some other runners out there that are probably training for the NYC half. So I figured, let me start a Facebook group, right? Um, a community of, of like-minded people running for or training for the NYC half. If I'm lucky, maybe I'll find a handful of maybe 10, 20 runners or whatnot. Had you ever started a Facebook group before? Or? I had never started one. I'd been a part of, of a mm -hmm. couple of them for different things, different hobbies and whatnot, but I never started one of my own. But you know, seeing how they worked, I thought it was a relatively easy way to meet other like-minded people and, and maybe interact. And right away, you know, people that were accepted into the lottery and, and had set their mind on training for the NYC half, they joined immediately. And little by little, I think I started the group like in October or November of 17. Mm -hmm. um, and the numbers just quickly started rolling in and it eventually swelled to like a few hundred people and um, which was mind boggling because here I am thinking of just, you know, oh, yeah, find 10, 20 folks to run with, maybe in Long Island, if not in the city or whatnot. But once the numbers started to, to really get high, I'm like, wow, this is this is pretty cool. And it became, you know, kind of a, a, a online community of, of folks exchanging tidbits and advice and, hey, what gels should I use or what stretches for a calf or whatnot or, hey, what's the course like and, and whatnot. And there were so many different things that, you know, we were discussing and in addition to training, mm -hmm. it was a very useful community, not just for me, but for so many other people. And that led to group runs as well. So meeting a lot of people in Central Park, which kind of fulfilled the need that I had initially, which was to meet people to get out and run with so that you weren't running alone. And there were a lot of people that wanted the same thing. They wanted a group to run with. They didn't want to run alone in their respective communities. And so here we were in Central Park meeting for weekly group runs. And I think we've been doing that now for about two years. So, which is mind boggling to me, but, <laughs> and we come out, you know, at, at all times of the year, rain, shine. And uh, the funny part was that people enjoy doing that at the onset of the Facebook group so much that when the NYC half eventually came um, in March of 2008, you know, I was approached by a lot of people. I'm like, hey, this, this race is about to come and go. Is this Facebook group gonna gonna cease? You know, mm -hmm. and I'm like, well, it doesn't have to. I mean, we can continue to meet and whatnot. And um, that's where I got the idea of of starting a run club. Because yeah, so cool. Right from the beginning, just such a cross section yes, of people absolutely. that it's not the not the same folks, not the, not the same area, not not necessarily even people who live in New York. Mm -hmm. But it was all people who, who wanted to run in New York. So. Absolutely. And that was the thing I like about it too was that the cross section, the diversity. You had a little bit of everything, and no one was being judged on their pace, their speed, right. their experience. You know, hey, this is your first race. Great, you know, I mean, come run with us. Oh, but I've never run before. You're going to be too fast. No, don't worry about that. You know, and we found a lot of people, once they came out for the first time, they were like, oh, this is not bad. You know, I, I can do this, you know, and, and little by little, that grew, you know, that advanced them to, to running more times with us and sign up for more races and uh, the community just helps itself, which is which is really amazing. So right, yeah, I know from doing group runs where um, I was very down on them for a long time because mm -hmm. I get there, show up, I'm a slow runner, and I'd be like, oh hi, yeah, and then yeah. and then maybe I might see somebody at the end, but otherwise it's like, well, why am I going to go somewhere and, and make the point of going on a group run when I could, if I'm going to be by myself, I can do this by myself. But that was one of the things I, I, I liked right from the beginning with our group runs. It's like, oh, there's actually people who are at my pace. Yes, absolutely. And <laughs> I, I've enjoyed that as well because, you know, sometimes, you know, even if it doesn't matter what your pace is, you know, your, your race pace is one thing. And, and sometimes people get, you know, stigmatized by their race pace. But you know what? Workouts aren't supposed to be race pace. So if you're a nine minute miler and you're coming out for a group run, I want to run 10 minute miles, 11 minute miles today because it should be an easier run. And there's always someone to run with, which, mm -hmm. which is a great thing. So um, I get that same comment by a lot of first timers like, oh, I'm afraid to come out because no one's going to run my pace. But I've never seen anyone leave saying I feel like a loner here. They always mm -hmm. find someone. Um, and thankfully it's because the group has swelled, you know, to, to so many people. So it's a great thing to just see kind of come together out of a Facebook group. Right. We are
And so when did you be, uh, get like when New York Roadrunners get affiliated and everything? How long did that take? That was actually relatively easy, which I was shocked. Um, I think part of what helped me was the wheels were in motion, so to speak, with the Facebook group. Before we approached New York Roadrunners, we had obviously talked about keeping a core of people together beyond the NYC half in 18 when, when we were all talking about this. And we had started coming up with names and we had started coming up with you know, different things that we wanted to do. You know, logos and all that, the logo that exists today. Yeah, so you who know, came up with that? I basically asked a designer friend of mine saying, hey, runners, New York, go crazy with it. <laughs> <laughs> it was as simple as that, okay. you know, and, and he gave me a couple of different designs and, and we actually retained a few of the designs still to this day. Um, but this is has that, become is kind of the main one. Yeah, this is yet? one of them. Yep, okay. this is the main one. There's a couple of other alternative ones that we use sometimes on different merchandise. And I think that's what helped get the ball rolling with New York River Runners so quickly is that we had a name, we had a logo, and then, you know, setting up a couple of social media accounts and websites, that, that came after the fact, but they were pretty easy um, in terms of getting us set up. Uh, what they didn't expect was the, the influx of people to our club, which has been mind boggling. Um, a lot of people have really signed up to run the club, and I think it just goes to show because it's all inclusive nature, you know, they feel comfortable. And the club being itself in the running community, I think has helped with our exposure and obviously our growth. It's my unscientific uh, figuring, but I think it might be the fastest growing New York Road Runner Club ever. I don't have any metrics on that. Yeah, so um, but I'm I, throwing it out there. Yeah, but, it could yeah. be. I mean, that's something for them to have to maybe look into, see how <laughs> so. fast you, you got to 300 plus members. Yeah. Um, yeah, coming up on two years now, and it's it's just over 300 members affiliated with New York Road Runners. Um, it is one of the largest groups. I know that if probably top 10, if not top 20 out there. I, I, I know because I've looked at numbers at the end of races or who, how many do we have complete this race or that race? And you kind of look and it's like, all right. It's a lot of people, a lot of runners. And that's, that's, it just says a lot about the club. You know, that a lot of people want to affiliate themselves with the club. And, and again, I think it's just because people are feeling good about coming out and, and being able to run um, with people no matter what their experience level is or pace. And, and we're making running fun because running a lot of times is stigmatized with a negative you know, connotation. You know, when you, you're in so. high school and college, right, whether you're on an athletic team, you were told to go run laps if you oh, were late true. You know, or that's whatnot, true. you know, or maybe your doctor's saying, well, you need to lose pounds, go out and run, mm -hmm. you know, and a lot of times because we're so busy, it's, it's hard to even find the time, you know, but I think it's a whole, it takes on a whole different meaning when you find that it's fun and you're finding that you're meeting people to do it with all of a sudden, I know I do, I find, I make the time to, to, to come out and run. It's, it's part of self-care, physically and mentally. And, you know, it helps when you have fun with, with a couple of other teammates to run with. So, you know, that kind of helps to lose the negative, you know, stigma that running has. It doesn't have to be a, a burden or a punishment, so to speak. Um, it is definitely a positive thing, so. Okay. What would you say sets, sets a club, um, you know, apart from other groups in New York? No, that's a good question. It's funny, when we have the, when we go to the club fair at New York Road Runners, I get that question a lot from interested members. And, and I say, I think the thing that sets us apart is, is number one, it's not a niche club. Not that niche clubs are a bad thing. Mm -hmm. You know, every, every club has its place, but it's not, signal, you know, it's not isolated to a borough. It's not isolated to a different background or whatnot. Um, and those things are great. I think there's a lot of clubs out there that, that are characterized that way. And, and I like them, you know, mm -hmm. I support a lot of them. But I think the art club is different in that it is all inclusive. You don't necessarily have to be from a borough or follow a particular or ideology or even from the U.S. Right. <laughs> we have members. It's a good point. You know, that's one of the things I, I didn't say before was that we have members from not just all around the country, but all around the world. Where's the uh, furthest distance member? Oh, we have Australian members. Wow. I mean, I don't think you can get further than Australia. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> so we have Australian members that come to New York quite often, once or twice a year. And the beauty about any member that's at, from out of town, whether it's from another state or another country, is that they obviously all have running clubs or groups that they run with wherever they're from. But when they come to New York, um, at least they know that they have a group that they can come here and run with. Vice versa, we as, as New Yorkers here that live here, I've seen so many members in the past year that they'll go to another state, another country, and they know, hey, what members do we have in Chicago? You know, I just came from the Chicago Marathon. It's a great example. I leaned on three of our members in Chicago. I said, look, I've never been to Chicago before. Mm -hmm. Where do we eat? 
where do we go? <laughs> where do we run? You know, and, and they were so helpful. And a lot of our members from New York have found that those out-of-state members, out-of-country members have been beneficial in helping them get around the city, you know, as a town that maybe they're not familiar with. And it's, it's exciting because it's not something I obviously thought of, <laughs> you know, when I started this way back when. But now that it's involved and you see the members that come and, and, and you know, like take, for example, the New York City Marathon this weekend. We have a ton of members coming in over this weekend and I'm excited to see them, you know, cause I haven't seen them in a little bit and they'll have their story and we'll have our story. So it's, it's really a great conversation. Yeah, about how many members are running the marathon this weekend? They should be about between 100 and 110. Um, okay. I say between because some people have deferred due to injury and whatnot. So the original number that I had thought may not be the eventual number that ends up running. A lot of first timers, a lot of repeats. So everyone bringing a different experience and um, level, you know, to the to the starting line on, on Sunday. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. Right. So. I noticed um, w there was a list of uh, you had created of, of to ask everybody to put where the corral and, and wave yeah, is. And yeah. it was all over. It's all over the place. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you have folks in, in wave one, corral B, all the way through wave four. You know, um, we even have a couple of members this year for the first time that actually qualified for the local competitive um, corral, which is which is very neat. You know, it's good for them. It's a testament to them, you know, their their ability to be able to to run fast and, and represent the club in that corral. But, you know, it, it also shows that we can coexist easily with members that maybe are back of the pack, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's fine because everyone gets along very well and we all help each other in different ways. The probably the uh, quintessential uh, the thing that people uh, remember the club for are the cheer squads. Cheer squads are just um, something, an idea I had that, you know, I think I, I wasn't running a race, but I wanted to be a part of it, uh, of the race, even though I wasn't running. And I said, well, let's get together and form a cheer squad. And at race after race, they wanted to continue to do that. And we've got a very vibrant and energetic cheer squad. It's made up of our members that when they're not running, they come out and they, and they cheer. And they really love it so much that at the marathon, we'll actually have three different stations. We'll have wow. one in Greenpoint, um, one in Manhattan on First Avenue, 94th, and one in the Bronx, I think in mile 21. So it's good as runners, especially in the marathon, that you're going to be able to see your, your club sign and your members cheering you on and at three different locations and even some of the runners have asked them to provide fuel at that station whether it's gels or drink mix or just water so it's good to be able to lean on your teammates it's just another way of of the type of community that we've kind of created here in this club which is awesome right yeah. and one of the things i remember from last year with doing the marathon i was my hip was bothering me i wasn't feeling so great <clears> but <throat> was seeing the the crew in the bronx it really uh, uh made me smile like oh, okay here. yeah <laughs> bronx is known it's mile 2021 20, people hit the wall and they definitely gave me a leg up they gave me some martin i think last year and helped you with your hip and we heard so many people thank them afterwards so it's really a great thing to have out there yeah invaluable one other thing i want to mention is uh the uh, michael Caparazzo? As in the New York Ruiners. Yeah. Yes. When you were in Chicago with the whole We Are NYC crew taking over Chicago, uh, he ran into me after the race and he's like, well, I saw signs with Caesar. Well, he's not even here. <laughs> uh, what, what is he doing? <laughs> Why is his picture at the Staten Island Half? And the fact that we had members of the club go put signs of pictures of you and, and other people in the club to encourage each other. And that, that's the thing. Like, I, I hear from people all the time, like, what, what's with these signs? Who are these people? Yeah, that's uh, one of our members lives in Staten Island. And uh, she did this last year and this year. She went out the night before the Staten Island Half and printed motivational posters with pictures of our club members on there and put them at different segments of the course and it helps you know even if it's just a chuckle at them you know <laughs> it helps get you through the the Staten Island half in that case so it's just another way that cheer squad really finds creative ways of of boosting our adrenaline and, and making you feel good about running so what goals do you have for the club in the future I want to be able to form partnerships like we have this year with finish line physical therapy they've been a, a, a great help um, shout out to them. Thank you for all they do. Just partnerships to help our runners become better runners, healthier runners, get them through the season um, healthier and get them faster. Um, I want to try to implement the program where we're looking at the different corrals and helping people meet their goal times to get to the next corrals um, and just continue to harvest, you know, a sense of positivity when they run. Because I firmly believe that when you feel positive and think positive, speed's going to come. 
right. going to get faster um, because you don't look at this as, as, a, as a burden anymore. And then what about personal running goals? What do you have? Personal running goals for me, 2019 was a lot of injuries for me. Um, I think it's because I ran a lot of races in 17 and 18. <laughs> Did very well in 17 and 18, uh, lots of PRs. But I think 19 was kind of a, a gut check year for me. Um, like I said, a lot of injuries. So I think in 2020, well, after the marathon, I kind of want to take a break reset and come back stronger in 2020. Uh, spend some time with Finish Line and get them to work on some of my bad habits that mm -hmm. I run with and um, just look to come back stronger in 2020 because I think running's something that you learn a lot from. No matter how long you've been in running, there's always something to learn. And I think I've been learning a lot in 2019 and, and looking forward to putting that in practice in the, in the upcoming year. Are, you, so. are there any um, lessons that you've learned recently from running, like kind of that become life lessons or? Yes, never sign up for two consecutive marathons ever again. <laughs> I just did Chicago and I'm about to run New York and it's it's tough, not so much physically, but mentally because um, I enjoyed Chicago, um, loved it, great race, great course, great city, but sometimes you need mentally just a break after a marathon. And I'm gonna do New York because many people would give an arm and a leg to run New York. and. I'm blessed to be able to do it. So we're going to go out there and have fun, but I'll never sign up for two marathons. Back to back again. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. That's my lesson. So. <laughs> it's funny how, you know, how many years in a row that, or how many years that you try to get in New York. Right. So you, you can never take it for granted. Right. So. There's no way I'm going to turn this opportunity down. So after being turned down for so many years, but if I can do it differently, I won't schedule them back to back next year. Okay. So, and yeah. then what, what are your goals for the marathon this year? This year, I'm just looking to go out and have a good time. Like I said, mentally, it's been tough to get back into it and train, but um, I'm going to go out there and have fun. Last year when I ran it, I ran it very focused. I didn't stop to take any pictures other than a quick high five. So I think this year, there's a lot of people that are going to be out there with me on the course. I mentioned our cheer squads are going to be out there at, at three different sections. So I'm going to really soak it all in. It's supposed to be a beautiful day weather-wise, so should make for great pictures and we have a lot of great people out there so and just be thankful for being out there thankful for the people that support the club support me so i think it's it's definitely going to be a, a marathon to just give thanks and, and go out there and have a good time and whatever the clock says at the end it says so okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. you doing the carbo loading with with the club um, the yes day before? yes absolutely tomorrow afternoon we've got our first ever we are nyc running club pasta party um thanks to pasta by hudson brandon's really really great so he's actually going to do the party for us and i'm looking really looking forward to it again great sense of community to be able to get together in a room with just your teammates to carbo load to mm -hmm. talk about your whatever anxiety you have coming up about the marathon um, and to get each other through it, you know, and, and to just laugh, choke, and for two, three hours, forget the fact that we're about to run 26 miles. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it. So thank you to Brandon and, and Pasta by Hudson for doing that. So looking forward to it. Thanks to Caesar for being here. And thanks to Manhattan Neighborhood Network and, and Will Sanchez for having us here as well. Thank okay. you for having me, Lisa. Okay, it was lots of fun. You. Thank yep. you.